What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my Legendary Ninian Banner Analysis. I'll also be going over my Water Legendary Tier List. So Legendary Ninian is present here as a Water Legend and she is a Green Dragon Cavalier. So that is pretty unique in terms of the class and also in terms of the role because we didn't really get any kind of melee Cavalier Dancer. All of the Cav Dancers that we have gotten have been ranged. So here she is with her Faithful Breath as the preferred weapon. This can provide her with plus 3 attack and whenever she uses her dance, she can inflict minus 6 defense and resistance on the nearest foes within 4 spaces of her and the target ally. So it does have a pretty huge range and she can debuff a lot of the foes at the same time. So this is going to be having good synergy with the cat skill and also her preferred assist which you'll see in a moment. So this weapon can also provide her plus 6 attack and speed in combat and it also gives her partial null follow up which is the offensive version which allows you to bypass any kind of follow up negation units. And finally if she has got the weapon strangle advantage against a blue opponent or if the opponent has got a penalty on them then she can essentially get the fire sweep effect and they're not going to be able to counter attack. So this is definitely pretty unique and this allows her to attack Ascended Idun, Brave Hector, Brave Dimitri, uh, Legendary Dimitri just easily without really taking any kind of retaliation and that is quite nice because her bulk is not going to be the highest um, in terms of like the raw defense so this conditional fire sweep effect is really amazing with the debuffs that she can get and also against a lot of the blue threats and her preferred assist is Dragon Stance and just like Pokemon's Dragon Dance, uh, this also gives you plus 6 attack and speed buff. So this is only going to be happening after turn 2 onwards. On turn 1, this is going to be like the vanilla dance. But after turn 2, you're able to get the visible buff to her attack and speed. And she can also inflict the isolation on herself. And she also refreshes herself. So she can act again, which is pretty amazing. And that allows her to just dance up someone and then act again and maybe go and attack a unit. And because she would have danced first, she would have debuffed the opponent uh, with her weapon. So that allows her to easily get the fire sweep effect. But keep in mind that this effect can only be used once every three turn. And you can actually see a visual cue on um, Legendary Ninian herself where it does say three turns left. So that is pretty amazing just to keep the track of it. Um, so she does inflict isolation on herself. Um, which means that you cannot really dance multiple times in a single turn unless you bring in someone like Ymir or something like that. Um, but overall, yeah, this is definitely balanced. It is good, but it's definitely balanced because of its limitation and how it cannot be, um, you know, used every single turn to get an extra action. So two actions are always amazing because a single unit who has Gale Force or who has, you know, another action is able to essentially... Um, you know, give your team extra action. So that is always going to be amazing for something like Aetherate's offense for using Gale Force strategy. Um, and being a dragon, unfortunately, she doesn't have access to Gale Force. And if she had that, she would have been really amazing. But she is still like a uh, two action dancer, which is still pretty nice. And the fact that she's got three movement as a cavalier is definitely pretty amazing for the reach and for dancing up the other cavalry units and matching their movement. So these are her two preferred skills and you can see the whole simplified version of it on your right side. Um, so overall she is not exactly too insane and her like dance is definitely quite balanced and kind of tame compared to the fallen version of Ninian uh, which does provide a lot more support. So this version of Ninian is definitely a lot more offensive in nature uh, with that attack speed catch 4, speed resistance near trace and also having blue feud which is really good with her weapon. So she can really hit hard against a lot of the blue units with her attack and uh, we already see her stats in the trailer. Um, she is paired up with Nil, so you just have to subtract the pair up stats and then you get her actual stats and after um, she dances she does get the extra buff here as you can see. And you can also see the isolation effect and also the visual cue of the uh, three turns remaining for that effect to again be activated so that she can act again after dancing. So by virtue of being a legendary unit, she's going to be able to score high with her pair up effect. 
And that is really good because a lot of these dancers are usually not going to be that high scoring except for like Duopini and you know stuff like that. And she also has her preferred dance so she's going to be scoring high in Arena and that is going to be making her a really good merch project just for the scoring and the support that she can provide in the Arena game modes. And she is also going to be a pretty nice unit to be used in Aetherate's defense because a lot of times people are going to be starting to tank from turn to onwards. So when she can get an extra action, she can essentially attack the near save unit for free. And because she's going to be having that fire sweep effect, she's not going to be getting any kind of counter attack. Hopefully if uh, the opponent has the debuffs. Um, so she's going to be pretty nice there, but she's a water legend. So it is going to be coming at a score cost. Um, I guess she could be used in the chaos season as well, but she's definitely going to be pretty susceptible to all kinds of isolation from Bridal, Fiorm and Mila as well. So she's mainly going to be functioning in Arena and in Summoner Duels as well, she can function as a 3 movement dancer um, and her HP is actually pretty nice for the support. So overall Ninian I would say that is a pretty good water legendary unit but she's not exactly insane or a must have that you must chase after and get. Uh, they did balance her dragon dance a bit and I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, so being a dragon dancer she doesn't really have too too many options uh, because being a dragon your specials are also restricted. You cannot really get ruptured sky or gale force so for arena you're forced to run blue flame. And in arena at max investment you're probably going to be seeing Ninian run with Dragon Strat 4 or with Chill Defense Resistance 3 uh, because a 300 SP sloppy skill is going to be allowing her to score like a 195 BST unit which is really good for optimizing your scoring. And in Summoner Duels she can always be used as a support productively uh, by stacking up HP and so that you can run even Pulse Tie. And this can allow you to just reset the Hardy Fighter armors and their pre-charge specials, Lethality Yuri and you know units like that. So she can always be used in the supportive way even though she's not kind of made for the support, she's a lot more offensive. Having more HP than Harmonica Zero is definitely a big boon for running even Pulse Tie. Unfortunately, Cavalry like units cannot get sudden panic. Uh, so even Pulse Tie is pretty much the support that she can provide and she can just be used on a budget as well. She does have some other options as well like Infantry Speed Tactic which is going to be amazing for Arena and for Summoner Duels for giving the null follow up to your infantry allies and she could also safely go and pulse smoke down some of the enemies like in summoner duels it really depends on your usage and how aggressive you are with her and the extraction that she can get but the fact that you can only get one action every three turns is uh, uh, definitely going to be making it so that you cannot really abuse that too much and she is going to be providing you with the fodder of attack speed catch 4 and speed resistance near trace um, not a lot of you know <laughs> cavalry dragons exist um, so speed resistance near trace is going to be a bit rare. Blue feud is definitely one of the better feud skills but um, I guess if you want to fodder off a feud skill then Tina is also present on this banner. And uh, now let's talk about the water legendary units as a whole. So water legendary units overall I would say are pretty stacked. Uh, definitely the most oppressive season now with two dancers and of course Chrom, Violet, all of these units. So I would put legendary Chrom in tier 1. Even though he's not really as insane anymore uh, when it comes to the combat and definitely gets outclassed in the combat by Valentine Krom and also for providing support. Um, but Legendary Krom is still a water legendary unit who has got 2 change fate and that movement utility is just so amazing in arena in a game mode where you're forced to run the dual rally skills and such. So having that reposition and he can also act after it is just amazing and he also hits pretty hard even now even though he can only double as easily as uh, Duochrome I suppose. Um, so I would definitely put him there and you can also run the new uh, slot B 300 SP skills so that he can score a bit higher. So not only he can score pretty good but he can also provide you with some amazing utility and also for uh, you know just retreating essentially with his reposition. Right beside Legendary Krom I would put our new Legendary Ninian because she is a water Legendary Dancer who can score like a 195 BST unit and that is extremely good. And she's also a 3 movement dancer and having a dancer in arena is going to be making your runs a lot less painful um, but I guess it's also really annoying to face her and like Legendary Krom and then <laughs> do a dogger and then Ninja Corrin. So all of these units can just have such a massive reach. Um, and Water Season is definitely going to be pretty oppressive uh, because of these units. It's also the only season with like two dancers in Legendary Ninian and Legendary Azura. 
Um, so yeah, Legendary Ninian is pretty amazing and she also has uh, good viability in Summoner Duels as a Event Pulse Tie Dancer. Um, while also providing you the support of a 3 movement dancer. And in Aetherite's defense, she could also be used, but again, Water Season is a bit limiting. In the Chaos Season, I would definitely have to test her out myself, unlike Gale Force teams and such, but having two actions is pretty nice, I suppose, uh, for a dancer. And I would also put Legendary Male Violet in Tier 1. Um, so Legendary Male Violet's niche is not as unique anymore because we have more ways of getting the external not follow up support. Um, and he does provide drive null follow up, but still he does have sublime heaven and he can also get the boosted damage against dragons and beast units with that special. So he can definitely function as a pretty good nuke and he does have new options now with the tempo skill and also the attack speed oath 4. So you can also try and run that. Um, so overall he's going to be functioning as a pretty solid unit. And then in tier 2 I would put Legendary Dimitri, so he has definitely got quite a bit of recent buffs with Vital Astra, Speed Smoke 4, and also the fact that Null Follow Up support is a lot easier to get. So he can definitely use that support and really excel in Arena and also in Summoner Duels, especially uh, like in the most recent Summoner Duels S, he was a bonus unit and um, a lot of people just ran him with Fallen Lilith and had a great time uh, with like plus 10 Legendary Dimitri. So he definitely needs the support to excel and really go to that next level. Um, so he's not exactly in tier 1 I would say, but uh, the difference between tier 1 and 2 is definitely not that far away. Uh, it's just that Dimitri needs a bit more support. Um, Ninian is of course going to be having good, uh, you know, matchup against Legendary Dimitri at the very least, if you're going to be using her. And before I move on to tier 3, I just would like to emphasize this, that tier 3 does not mean bad. A lot of people see any kind of favorite unit of theirs or any unit in like below tier 2 and they just lose it. But <laughs> a unit being in tier 3 is not bad, at least in my lists, because it just means that the unit above them are strong. And like I said, water legendary units are pretty stacked. Um, so when you are comparing them and when you really compare the power levels and the utility, some units obviously are going to be coming out on top because of their viability doesn't mean that tier 3 units are bad. With that disclaimer out of the way, here are the tier 3 water legendary units. So legendary Sita is kind of borderline tier 2 I would say, um, especially if you use her with like a dancer because you can go in, get the vantage and then use the Kanto. Uh, so in that sense, in the aggressive player phase strategies in arena, she could definitely help you. And legendary Azura finds herself in tier 3 because she's not as high scoring like Ninian. So if you want a water dancer, then Ninian is the one to build up. Legendary Leaf is going to be due for his remix and he also has a range Gale Force, so that is pretty unique. And then Erika also has flat Kanto 2, also has damage reduction and null follow up. So she's actually pretty good post remix, I would say, even though she kind of gets overshadowed by a lot of these sword cavaliers that we have now. But, but in terms of like water legend units, she's still not that bad whatsoever. And she can also function in like summoner duels, um, so that is pretty nice. And in the tier 4, we have got Fiarm and Legendary Realma. Now, again, these units are not exactly bad. Even like Fiarm, who's in tier 4, can still tank like Duo Chrome with her Ice Mirror, and in some cases, can even tank like Legendary Male Violet and just kill him because of Ice Mirror too. Uh, but the thing is that she will have to run B Duel Infantry 4 to get the high scoring in Arena, so. That sucks a bit because you're kind of losing out on an actual slotty skill. Um, and in Aether Raid's offense, safe tanks are pretty much going to be specializing in the role of tanking. And the final unit in tier 4 is going to be Legendary Ryoma. So his remix and refine was definitely better than a lot of disencounter uh, weapons. But it's not the most insane when you compare it to the other water legendary units. And he doesn't have Kanto. Um, as a flying unit and if he runs Kanto then he's gonna be missing out on like Bushido too which is still pretty good. He's also a legendary unit who has to run dual 4 in arena. So yeah that is gonna be my water legendary tier list. Let me know what you think about this and which is your favorite legendary uh, water unit because this like season is just so stacked and it's so annoying in arena. Um, it's so oppressive especially with all of the dual units that we have now. Overall, Legendary Ninian Banner does give you some good value in the green color, especially if you're trying to merge up some water Legendary units. So you can just merge up Legendary Ninian and Male Violet both. Pretty much the tier 1 uh, water legends in a sense, which are going to be making your arena matchups a lot easier. 
and um, the red, blue and colorless are also not that bad depending on your priorities uh, because like blue also has Fallen Ninian, it does have Note, it does have um, you know Legendary Female Pilot who can also be a merch project for a lot of people and of course red does have Fallen Lilith, one of the best support units and colorless is also not that bad with some of the more unique units and like Tine and Ascended Farina. Um, so it does have good support units as well. The next month we're gonna be getting a Halloween banner and we're also gonna be getting the rerun of the older Halloween banners and October is also gonna be having double special heroes banner which is gonna be having a lot of fan favorites like young Ike, young Soren, Groom Roy and of course Spring Maria with her <laughs> uh, you know true damage reduction and Hatari Nyla and Valentine Owen are probably gonna be present there as well. And we are not really too sure how often we're going to be getting a rearmed unit. Uh, maybe next month could be like rearmed Bruno or rearmed Veronica. I think that could happen. Um, and a new Anima Mythic is kind of due uh, for the next month because next month is going to be a Mythic month. Um, they are having these double legendary units um, and they are kind of slowing down on the Mythics. But next month, hopefully, we're able to get a new Anima Mythic unit. And these are the units which I'm expecting on the next month's Mythic Hero banner. So we do know quite a lot of them already because of the reruns. And this is just my educated guess, but last time I was pretty on point. Um, so Colorless is probably going to be having the new Anima Mythic. And I'm guessing it might be Arvel because Three Hopes units have made their way into phase. So Arvel does make sense for the Anima um, element. And Asker is also color sharing uh, along with Elamine. So definitely pretty high value when it comes to the colorless it's gonna be having like three mythics so that is really good i'm really looking forward to it because i really want to merge up my asker and um getting the new anima mythic is also gonna be pretty nice it also has two red dancers in miropolis and plumeria and uh Lif is also due for a remix um so if you are trying to finish their merch projects it could be something that you could look forward to and now let's go over the other units present on this banner Legendary Xander is a Fire Legendary unit with Ebon Bulwark and Chivalry as his preferred skills. And as someone who has used Legendary Xander for literally hundreds of games, I would say that honestly he's a pretty good Axe Cavalier who can function in the mix phase. Ebon Bulwark does give you Null Follow Up and also the Special Acceleration along with the healing. So he can function with specials like Luna and also run Gale Force. And Chivalry does provide you with the damage reduction. And against the full HP enemies, he can easily get like 50% damage reduction, which is really good with Null Follow Up. And he also has Neo Trace built into it. So because he does have the visible Null Follow Up and the Special Acceleration, that's also the visible effect. It could be erased by Duo Thor, for example, in Summoner Duels. But overall, he is going to be functioning as a pretty good Axe Cavalier, but not necessarily someone who is a must-have. And he does provide some good fodder in attack speed catch 4, which a lot of cavalry units and flyers can run. And colorless feud is easily one of the better feud skills because a lot of meta units are colorless and also a lot of support units are also colorless like flame and elamine. Legendary Male Byleth is still a pretty amazing green mage nuke with sublime heaven and having professorial text giving you that drive null follow up. Even though nowadays we have seen a lot of other ways of getting null follow up like with Fallen Lilith, Ascended Salika providing infantry null follow up and Brave Trom of course providing infantry speed tactic. So his niche of providing that null follow up support is not really that unique anymore especially because you need to be within two spaces of uh, you know Byleth to get that but with Fallen Lilith it's a lot more lenient. So he does face competition in that regard but at least he does have Sublime Heaven which can pierce through the damage reduction which a lot of mages can really struggle with. So a lot of mages do get walled by Hardy Fighter and Deflect Magic far safe tanks and you know Hardy Fighter can still just tank Legendary Male Pilot but the Deflect Magic damage reduction can get pierced by Sublime Heaven and he can always pre-charge the special and now he also has the option of using tempo skills if he wants to trigger his Sublime Heaven on the second hit. So that is really good for his alternate options and overall he's going to be a pretty amazing water legendary unit who can hit really hard and is going to be having pretty good player phase. His fodder is pretty nice with attack defense ideal 4 and you can also get lull attack resistance or time pulse with it at the same time if you fodder off a Skahawk. 
Tine is a colorless infantry mage who can be a pretty unique mage because of her thunderer tome, so this weapon does provide her the ability to pierce through the damage reduction, and like I said in Violet section, a lot of mages cannot really do that because we don't really have the lethality or deadeye equivalent for these mages, so Tine can definitely be pretty unique with that and especially the fact that she can pre-charge her special with this kind of weapon, so she is kind of like a magical young Innes in that sense, being able to pierce through the damage reduction and being able to pre-charge her specials is also really nice. Her fodder is Fury 4 and Null Follow Up which you could get at the same time and you can also get Blue Feud which is going to be really useful against a lot of the Brave Hectors and Ascended Eduns and it's definitely one of the better feud skills as well along with Colorless Feud but again if you're not really too hardcore competitive then the feud skills are not going to be that big of a point of interest for you. Ascended Florina is a colorless bow flyer with a pretty unique weapon that can allow the allies to teleport to her when she's below 60% HP and this can really enable a lot of gale force strategies. Now unfortunately Florina herself doesn't have access to disarm trap and neither does she hit really hard to take out a lot of the far safe tanks which are gonna be a big obstruction for any kind of gale force team especially in the dark season. So that's why she can struggle to break through those kinds of far safe tanks but still she can be a pretty good unit to enable that kind of strategy and she's definitely unique in that aspect. She does provide you with some nice fodder with attack speed push 4 and speed defense fod traits which you could get at the same time and you can also get the joint drive speed and the fod trait skill at the same time. So a lot of ranged units are going to be loving this skill especially the offensive ones which are fast so her fodder is going to be useful to a lot of people. Mila is still a pretty nice light mythic who can provide you with the isolation support with her slotsy skill and this can allow you to just isolate any kind of dancer with a lower defense or any kind of rally trap unit or a healer who has got return plus or something like that so she can always help you in that regard but of course Dancer Eldigan is going to be omnipresent as a dancer in the dark season who can just deny getting isolated by Mila because of his sheer defense so he is going to be a bit annoying for her but still she can be a nice support unit with her slotsy skill and the fact that she can provide some extra stats with her nurturing breath and she can of course run sabotage skills to provide even more support and I guess the extra turn that she provides you with her slotsy skill can actually be pretty nice especially for the pot collection if you're using a safe tank team which is going to be having not that high of a mobility and can provide you with bracing stance 3 and the dual rally skill at the same time for the fodder. Fallen Ninian is an amazing dancer and she's quite underrated in all of the Azuras and Peenies that we have. So with Call to Flame, she can provide you the plus 6 attack and also the special acceleration status effect which can free up a lot of your tanks from running the Breath Sacred Seal so they can just get the special acceleration with this. And she can also be a really good support unit for a lot of dragons because when she dances them, she can provide the extra 1 movement to those dancers and she can of course stack up what dragons to provide even more bulk to them and her preferred breath can also provide you with the ruse effect which can inflict minus 7 attack and resistance debuff on the foes and also the guard effect so that is pretty nice for providing you the support and also just preventing the enemies from triggering their special with that guard effect so I've used her quite a lot competitively and honestly I really like her as a dancer and many times I kind of prefer using her over a lot of the other dancers so she's definitely a pretty nice dancer to have and she also provides you with some amazing fodder with b Duel Infantry 4 and Crossbar Attack which you could get at the same time because like Dancer Barkut's Fallen Manual is present in Divine Codes 2 so you can easily get up to like the version 3 of the dual skill and then just use Ninian to inherit like the Crossbar Attack or the Odd Pulse Tie at the same time. Odd Pulse Tie is a bit more niche, it is mainly useful for Aether Raid's defense and in a lot of situations in Aether Raid's offense or for summoner duels, even Pulse Tie is going to be preferred a bit more uh, but Cross Per Attack is always going to be a pretty amazing slotsy support skill. Both pilots are present on this banner and female pilot is a blue infantry mage and she can provide the drive tempo effect to her allies compared to the drive null follow up which pilot can provide and so far we don't really have any kind of effect as far as I can remember that can provide uh, you know this kind of drive tempo effect so in terms of support 
she's definitely a bit more unique than um, male pilot but when it comes to combat she's definitely a bit lacking because she doesn't have sublime heaven which can pierce through the damage reduction and goddess bearer was a pretty nice skill that she had which can provide her with null follow up and also pretty much the attack speed oath 4 buff but now that we have attack speed oath 4 as the inevitable option a lot of units can just run that and it doesn't really give you null follow up like goddess bearer but still it does provide you with that teleportation which was still a bit unique to pilot so unfortunately she's not going to be hitting as hard but her support is a bit more unique with that drive tempo you can also run wind sweep on her just like male pilot because she does get null follow up from her slotsy skill for her fodder, she does provide you with attack speed ideal 4 and ruptured sky which you could get at the same time which is going to be loved by a lot of mages because ideal 4 skill does give you the most offenses and ruptured sky is a nice to cooldown special which is also high scoring in the colosseum game modes so a lot of mages are going to be lacking that. You can also get the lull speed resistance at the same time but ruptured sky is a bit more hard to get. Even though Duo Dogger is in the game and we have Medias as a really fantastic Dark Mythic unit, Nota is still a pretty nice Dark Mythic herself because she can provide the Pathfinder from her weapon and she can also function well in the combat because of the bonus doubler in her weapon and the damage reduction that she can get out of Moon Twin Wing. She also has gotten some nice tools in the past few months in Vital Astra, Attack Speed Oath 4 and Canto Control which she can also use to provide support in Aetherite's defense as well as in Summoner Duels. And in Summoner Duels, she could function as a much better frontliner than Duo Dogger obviously because of being a melee unit. So she's going to be functioning as a pretty nice unit overall. And you can actually stack up Pathfinder if you have Duo Dogger so that can be really strong as well. And her fodder is going to be nice for arena scoring at least because she can provide you two 300 SP skills. And attack speed menace can be run by a lot of cavaliers but a lot of uh, the flyers and the infantry units can just try and run attack speed oath 4 which doesn't really need any kind of enemy to be in their range and they can also enjoy the teleportation with it. Fallen Lilith is easily one of the best support units in the entire game so she can provide the null follow up to her support partner and this also allows her to teleport within two spaces of them so this can essentially create a higher threat zone for your main unit who's going to be getting the benefit out of null follow up and she is always paired with someone like legendary Dimitri for example who really wants to have atrocity in a slot B. So those kinds of units can make really good use out of Fallen Lilith and as a unit herself she is going to be hitting pretty hard for a dragon. We don't really have too many red flying dragons so she can do her job and then get the speed smoke for the buff and get the damage reduction. And of course her fodder is just top tier with that speed smoke 4. It is useful for so many units especially the units which cannot have access to damage reduction skills. So that is going to be a really good option for them if they function in the mix phase. Regan is still a pretty amazing Astro Mythic because of having that flat Canto 3 built into her weapon and Sather Shell having the adaptive damage. So she can always help you in Aether Raid's offense but in Summoner Duel she is going to be facing competition from Legendary Nana and Brave Selif in terms of pure nuking as they can just hit really really hard and Brave Selif also has really annoying survivability as well. But still she's a nice cavalier to have because of the unique things that she brings and her fodder is also pretty nice as you can get to Sparrow 3 and Lot Speed Defense at the same time. Now Lot Speed Defense does face competition with the other sloppy skills and so Sparrow is only there for the player phase so it is going to be competing with Attack Speed Unity and Attack Speed Ideal for a lot of units and she is an Astro Mythic so merging her is going to be improving your ranking and your score. And finally we have got Legendary Lilina as a Red Mage Cavalier Nuke. So she has got still water now which means that she can still make use of her resistance while getting the extra attack. But of course on a budget you want to run double life and death. So she can hit hard with her AoE special but a lot of the smart opponents are going to be able to avoid the AoE special if they place their far safe tank in a good way. So they can just avoid the AoE damage and then take on Lilina in the combat. But still her player phase is going to be quite destructive on her own. Especially in something like Arena. She's not the highest scoring unit there but still like she can nuke a lot of units in her player phase. And she can threaten a huge amount of area on the map which can of course lead into a lot of rally loops and such. 
So she's gonna be quite good there for nuking and now she can also get a 300 SP slot B skill So she gets to improve her scoring by a bit Which is definitely pretty nice if you have heavily invested into her as for her fodder Unfortunately, it's not really too impressive Sabotage resistance is already present on Solon and attack resistance solo does face competition from so many of the other skills And pulse smoke is there as a good fodder, but we just got groom pent in the free ephemera manual with pulse smoke so I'm not really too sure if it's going to be really worth foddering her for the stuff that she has at the moment. Make sure to share this video with your friends if they are trying to pull on this banner. And if you enjoyed, then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more Fae videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Ninian's Dragon Dance on turn 1. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.